Hello and welcome back. The purpose of the seven checkpoint kinetic chain assessment that you're about to perform is to assess dynamic flexibility, core strength, balance, and overall neuromuscular coordination. There are two distinct stages to this assessment protocol. The first stage of the assessment, known as the observation stage, is the easy part because I'll be presenting it to you in a very systematic way that doesn't require a deep understanding of biomechanics or movement sciences. The second stage, known as the corrective exercise prescription, is really the more difficult part because it involves assigning specific exercise routines that correspond to the observation of movement compensations that you'll uncover during stage one. But not to worry because I'll actually be the one prescribing those routines for you based on the information gathered during the observation stage. Now, I want to highlight a few other important details before you jump in. First, I'm going to suggest that you wear clothing that will allow for a clear and unobstructed view of the seven key checkpoints being observed during this assessment. Practically speaking, that means wearing a well-fitted t-shirt or a golf shirt and a pair of shorts. It's also important to note that you should be barefoot during this assessment to make observations of the ankle joint. That means no socks and no shoes. Second, it's recommended that you use a video camera or smartphone to record yourself performing this assessment, which will allow you to gather data more objectively from the three vantage points that we'll take from our observations. Capturing yourself on video enables you to go back and observe any movement compensations with a more objective lens. It's just much easier than attempting to use a mirror, and with easy access to video recording on most smartphones today, it should be a convenient option for you as well. Now in the absence of a video camera or smartphone, you also have the option of inviting a friend or family member to observe you while performing the assessment and simply report back to you what they observe. This method will work just fine too. In either case, the remainder of this video outlines very clearly what you'll be looking for when making your observations. No prior experience or expertise is needed. You can leave that part to me. Remember, you'll enter your observations into the form below this video. Once all seven checkpoints have been entered, you will then click the next button to submit your data and you'll receive immediate analysis based on your personal results. Make sense so far? Okay, let's begin. First, the basics. The functional movement screen we'll use today to reveal any potential movement dysfunctions is called the overhead squat assessment. To perform the overhead squat assessment, you will stand with your feet at about shoulder width and with your toes pointed straight ahead. The arms will then be raised straight overhead with the palms facing forward. You will then proceed to perform a squat movement, which simply means that you're going to push your hips back and bend your knees as if you're about to sit into a chair placed behind you. Once the rear end reaches the approximate height of a chair, you will then return to the standing position and will repeat this movement pattern for 6 to 10 repetitions in a row. You'll repeat the same pattern for those 6 to 10 repetitions from each of the three vantage points, the anterior view from the front, the lateral view from the side, and the posterior view from the rear. During the entire movement, your aim is to maintain neutral spine with the feet pointed straight ahead, keeping contact with the heels on the floor and with the arms raised overhead while maintaining alignment of the torso. As a side note, if you really can't keep your heels on the floor during this movement, first make sure that you're pressing your hips backwards as if you're sitting in a chair placed behind you as opposed to sitting downwards and allowing your knees to poke forward. Your goal is to keep the heels on the floor at all times. But if that work and your heels continually raise up off the floor, then try placing a small one inch platform, like a book, beneath the heels and then perform the full assessment with this slightly raised and supported heel position. Next, let's explore the seven key checkpoints that will reveal your movement compensations. Remember, you'll enter your observations from all three vantage points, from the anterior view, the lateral view, and the posterior view. You'll enter this data into the form located directly below this video. 
And again, once all seven checkpoints have been entered, you'll then click the Next button to submit your data and you'll receive immediate results and analysis based on your personal observations. Let's look at kinetic checkpoint number one from the anterior view. The first kinetic checkpoint will be observed from the anterior view with special attention paid to the positioning of the feet. Here we have the starting position and the finishing position. Ideally, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the feet will remain at shoulder width with both feet pointing straight ahead. However, it's not uncommon for the feet to begin to turn outwards as the movement progresses. This turning out of the feet is the first dysfunctional movement compensation that we're looking for. If you observe this turning out of the feet during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number one in the form below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observe. The second kinetic checkpoint that will be observed today is also from the anterior view with special attention paid to the lateral movement of the knees. Here we have the start position once again and the finishing position. Ideally, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the knees will remain parallel with one another without deviating inward or outward. However, there are two possible movement compensations here. The first movement compensation at this kinetic checkpoint is the caving inwards of the knees towards one another, and the second compensation is the bowing outwards of the knees away from one another. Either of these compensations of the knees represents the second dysfunctional movement compensation that you and I are looking for here today. If you observe this caving in or bowing out of the knees during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number two on the form below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observed. Now this concludes the observations from the anterior view. Let's move on to the lateral view where there are three more kinetic checkpoints that you'll be observing. The third kinetic checkpoint that we'll observe today is from the lateral view with special attention paid to the curvature of the low back. Here we have the start position and the finish position. Ideally, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the back, low back that is, will remain in a neutral position with only a mild natural arching curve. However, there are two possible compensations here. The first compensation at this kinetic checkpoint is the overarching of the low back as seen here in the diagram. And the second compensation is the rounding of the low back as seen here. Either of these compensations of the low back represents the third dysfunctional movement compensation that we're looking for. If you observe either the overarching of the low back or a rounding of the low back during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number three on the form below this video and check the box that corresponds most directly to what you observed. The fourth kinetic checkpoint that will be observed today is from the lateral view with special attention paid to the degree with which the upper torso leans forward. Here we have our starting position and our finished position. Ideally, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the upper torso will lean forward only slightly to about 45 degrees and will be virtually parallel with the shin bones of the lower leg, as you can see here. However, it's not uncommon for the upper torso to experience an excessive forward lean as the movement progresses. This excessive forward lean of the upper torso is the fourth dysfunctional movement compensation that we're looking for. If you observe this excessive forward lean of the upper torso during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number four on the form below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observe.
The fifth kinetic checkpoint that we'll be observing today is also from the lateral view, with special attention paid to the positioning of the arms that are extended overhead. Here we have our starting position and of course our finishing position. Now ideally, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the arms will remain fixed overhead without bending or falling forward. However, it's not uncommon to see the arms bend or fall forward as the movement progresses. This falling forward of the arms is the fifth dysfunctional movement compensation that we're looking for. If you observe this bending of the arms or falling forward of the arms during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number five on the form located directly below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observe. This concludes the observations from the lateral or side view. We've now completed five out of the seven key checkpoints. Let's move on to the posterior view for the final two kinetic checkpoints. The sixth kinetic checkpoint that will be observed today is from the posterior view, with special attention again be paid to the feet. Here we have our start position and of course our finish position. Ideally, as you, move, as you perform the overhead squat assessment, the feet and ankles will remain fixed and in a sturdy position. However, it's not uncommon to see the feet flatten as the inside arches of the feet fold toward the floor as you reach the lowest part and lowest point of the squat assessment. This flattening of the feet it represents the sixth dysfunctional movement compensation that we're looking for here today. It should be noted that you can usually observe this same compensation from the anterior view. However, to keep things simple, I'll classify this compensation only existing from the posterior view. If you observe this flattening of the feet during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this compensation by scrolling down to question number six on the form located directly below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observe. Now the seventh and final kinetic checkpoint that we'll be observing today is also from the posterior view with special attention paid to the lateral movement of the hips or more specifically the lumbopelvic hip complex or LPH complex. Once again here we have the starting position and the finishing position. Ideally as you perform the overhead squat assessment the lumbopelvic hip complex will remain equally balanced over the feet without any deviation to the left or right. However, it may be observed that the lumbopelvic hip complex undergoes a lateral shift to either the left or the right as you reach the lowest point of the squat movement. This lateral shift of the hips is the seventh and final dysfunctional movement compensation that you and I are looking for here today. Now, if you observe this lateral shifting of the hips, during your overhead squat assessment, please indicate this movement compensation by scrolling down to question number seven on the form located directly below this video and check the box that corresponds to what you observe. It's very important to note, you should know, whether you experience this compensation to the right or to the left. And there is a space in question number seven below to make that indication. Please ensure that you enter your results correctly in the form below. Now this concludes the seven key checkpoints and we ha now have all of our observations from the anterior view, from the lateral view, and from the posterior view. You should now have completed all seven kinetic checkpoints and entered your findings in the data collection form located directly below this video. By clicking the next button at the bottom of the data collection form, you'll receive instant access to a highly personalized report that will reveal the underlying causes of your golf swing dysfunction that you may be experiencing. Armed with these findings, you'll not only have a true understanding of what needs correcting, but remember, I'll also be offering you special access to my Golf Fitness Insiders online membership resource area where I'll be assigning specialized workout routines that are specifically designed to cure the exact movement compensations that you may be experiencing so that you can finally break through and play the way you ought to be performing, no longer being held back by the physical limitations that we've identified today. So if you've completed all seven questions below, then go ahead and click the next button at the bottom of this page 
right now for instant access to your personalized analysis.